And everybody say no limits. That one, everybody. Everybody say no limits. How many of you enjoy watching the Olympics? You enjoy watching the Olympics? You enjoy watching the Olympics? Okay. How many of you don't really care anything about the Olympics? Hey, man, have some, like, country pride like that. All right, Haiti has to be doing something, Ted. Something. I, I don't know what they're doing, but Haiti has to be doing something. I know, like, all right, so USA, we got some good things that's going on. I know Puerto Rico, we we, we, we doing, but we we trying to do something in basketball. We're probably going to get out first round. But, hey, we, we're, we're there. It's having a lot of fun. I, I enjoy the Olympics. Olympics time is fun because you see um people working for four-plus years for one event. Four plus years. I imagine your entire high school career all for one test. Pass or fail. Because, you know, like second place is the first loser, so it doesn't really matter. Um, um, imagine, imagine doing all this work, playing four years of football all for one game, and if you did good, if you win, then you win. If you lose, then uh, did you waste all of your time? I love the Olympics because there's so much that's on the line. Anybody like to brag? Bragging rights? You like bragging rights? I, I've talked to y'all. I know you like bragging rights, especially if you wear Lakeland stuff. I know you like bragging rights, right? So, listen, that's what's going on here. You got bragging rights that is going on. I love what's happening in the Olympics, and I'm really excited about this one because there is somebody potentially your age that's in the Olympics. Y'all heard about this cat? My man named what? Quincy Wilson, 16 years old, class of 2026. He's going to be running in the Olympics. Like think, think of yourself being in the Olympics. He in the Olympics. What are you doing? Hey, I'm eating Cheetos and watching Netflix. I don't know about you. Like, like my, my man is 16 years old and out here balling in the Olympics. He, he's going to be doing the 400-meter race, which is one full lap. He, he broke the under 18 world record for his, in his race in the semifinals. He, he did a 40, he ran a one full lap. Anybody else walk that lap? You are, okay, yeah. Oh, he did 44 seconds, uh, 44.66 seconds the first time he ran it. Then in the state semis, Jackson, he smashed you. He ran 44 seconds, 44.59 seconds. Quincy was booking it. This man is 16 years old. He made it to the 400 relay, 4x400 relay team for the USA. He is the youngest male track Olympian. He's the youngest USA Olympian male track athlete. I said it. Yay. I practiced. Thank you. I practiced it. I, I pre- that was my Olympics. Uh, he, my man was going all in. You see, here's the thing. Quincy, he's in a race for the Olympics, but the reality is, and we don't like to talk much about it because we say it's too spiritual. Quincy's in a a race for the Olympics, but everybody in the world is in a race for eternity. What happens when you die? Do you believe anything happens? Do you believe you come back as a goat? Cow or ant? based off of how I live in this world depends on who I come back in the next world. What, what do you believe actually happens to you? Do you believe that there's something that will happen after you die? What, what, what are you living this life for? There's this place that's called eternity that if you're a Christ follower, uh, then you believe in it. If you believe in a heaven, you have to believe in a... If you believe in good, you have to believe in... There's good, there's bad, there's heaven, there's hell, there's opposites on both ends. And so there's this thing of eternity that you and I are going to have to decide. We get to pick where we go. And anybody, what if I was to tell you, um, hey, I got your tickets to an amusement park. Here you go. How many of you would be really excited? Okay, same, same. Now, what if I was to say, hey, I'm going to buy you tickets to whatever amusement park you want to go to. Who wants that deal? Like, you get to pick. You get to pick. You and I get to pick where we go in eternity. And you decide how much fun you're going to have. You decide if this is where you're wanting to be for the rest of your life. And once you take it, there ain't no turning back. The Bible actually says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. It says this, you've all been to the stadium and seen athletes race. But what? Everyone runs, one wins. Run to win. All good athletes train hard. 
They do it for the gold medal that tarnishes and fades, unless your mama keeps it. But you're after one that's gold eternally. Meaning I'm not limited to what's happening here. I'm going for something that only God can give, not man can give. Paul continues to say, I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. I need everybody to say that again. I'm giving it everything I've got. No lazy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everybody else all about it, and then missing out on it myself. Paul, when he's writing this, he's challenging some folk. He said, hey, I know you're trying to be trending on TikTok. And yo, go get it. I know you try to climb the ranks when it comes to your ball team. Go get it. I know you're trying to get into that Ivy League school or that academic program. Go get it. I know you want your bank account to hit that number. There ain't nothing wrong with it. But all that stuff, at some point, when you die, it ain't going with you. No matter where you choose. So pick the right race to be in. You ever been, um, you ever been at a lunch table? And you and your friends, or maybe your friends, and you're not in it because you're the good one in your friend group, right? <laughs> no, thank you for being honest. Oh, uh, so maybe, maybe, maybe you've been at the table before, and you see some people just beefing in it, da da da, da and somebody said, "Well, what you think?" It's like that ain't even a problem. I even want to get into. Like, it's not worth my time. It's not worth all of that. I think you and I sometimes we put way too much effort into things that don't matter. My mama used to tell it to me this way. My mama used to say, "Caleb." You major on the minors, and you minor on the majors. Meaning this, the things that are a really, really big deal, you don't think that they matter. And the things that are a little deal, like they, they, they really don't matter, you're trying to make the biggest deal, and you're being all dramatic, and you need to stop. That's what my mom would say. Pastor Leah just hits me now whenever that happens. But stop, stop making it a big deal. Get, we got to get our priorities back in check. Ain't nothing wrong with balling out in life down here. But not at the expense of me losing sight as to where I'm going. There's another verse in the Bible that says, So we fix our eyes not on the things that are seen, but what's unseen. Since what's seen is temporary, but what's unseen is everlasting. We got to fix our eyes. So that's what Paul was saying. Paul was saying this, life ain't a cozy bed. He said it's a race, which means this, there's winners and there's losers. You ever lost before? Doesn't feel good, does it? You ever win before? Like, accidentally I did good? Yeah. Okay, I'm talking with my boy Daydream. Call him out for a second. Daydream just got back, what, this week, uh, late part of last week. He was up in Washington State at Nationals. Did I do something wrong? Okay. He was up at Washington State at Nationals for a health thing. He wrote a diet. Got questions asked for it, like, how, how to lose weight and you help me get snatched he, he he wrote a diet how the hell lose weight this person had this condition had all these really smart people with probably a lot of letters after their name ask him a bunch of questions about it and my man won gold yeah you can celebrate that like hey gold is first place <laughs> that's a big deal that's a big deal you, you're, you're winning first place I love it when when Polk County teams go out and win state championships I love it those are great things that happen not George Jenkins, but they're great things that happen. I love, I love it. I love it. It's okay, not Gibson either. I love it when, I love it when that happens. Here's, here's what it's saying here. There's winners and there's losers. And as much fun as we have with it, losing doesn't feel good. So I want to do everything I can in order to win. He said, I'm going to give things everything I got. Winner, who, who are winners in life? Winners are those people who pursue a relationship with Jesus. The only Christian who has ever lost is the Christian that gave up. The only way you lose is by not trying anymore. I tried it for a couple weeks. It wasn't working. I tried it for a couple months. It wasn't working. I tried it, but I wasn't feeling nothing. So I just got off. And now I'm going back to living based off of my feelings and my emotions rather than by a discipline. I think that's why they talk about this idea of sports. Because you ask an athlete, you ask a football player, they do not want to be outside in the heat right now training. But more than they don't want to be in the heat, they really want to win a state championship. So I'm willing to do what I don't want to do 
so I can achieve what nobody else can achieve. Right? You, you, ever, you ever heard that? I see that on TikTok all the time now. Uh, to, to get what you don't have, or to get what you've never had, you got to do what you've never done. Ever heard that? Like, that's this mindset. How do I keep growing? How do I keep winning in this thing of life? I keep pursuing Jesus because those are those who gave up, stopped pursuing Jesus. And then he says this, there's a reward that you're going to get. These people, they're running for a gold medal that, hey, it sounds good. And as long as mom puts it up in the refrigerator, good for you. Put it in the storage unit when you get married. Pastor Liz don't let me put up none of my trophies. I mean, like, I ain't got none. But, like, if I did, like, crumble cookie connoisseur. I still wouldn't even do that. But, like, 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 like let me go. Chipotle connoisseur. I can eat my way to Chipotle just have your camera out. I, I love my Chipotle. So, but, Pastor Liz, she don't let me put things up. Why? Because in right now to us, those things don't matter. There's more important things that are going on. I'm not so worried about my past. I'm worried more about my future. If you look at, notice in the car that you drove here in or rode in, your front windshield is, oh my God, bigger than your rear view windshield. You know why? Or your rear view mirror. You know why? Because you can glance at your past to see how far you've come, but you're not supposed to drive looking in the past. You do that, you start getting in this cycle, and we keep making the same bad decisions over and over and over again. No, I want to I wanna live life. I want to do some new things, which means I have to keep my eyes set forward. I got to keep keep moving this thing. There's a reward that you're going to get, and you're either going to be rewarded by one of two things, by people or by God. Anybody ever ask you to lie for them? Yeah. And then they thank you for lying for them? Yo, hey, I went out on a date last night, but I told mommy that I was at your house. I push a button. So my mom is going to call your mom and I need you to tell your mom that I was with you last night because I was really over it. I know who I'm talking to. You get celebrated by that person for lying and that crushed Jesus' heart. But that's a lie for it. For what? Be honest. Be, t- tell the truth. There's things that I can do in my marriage that will screw up my marriage. That I can find a group of guys that will give me a high five and celebrate it. That's right. Way to be a man. Way to put her in her place. Way to let her know what's up. That, that, that's not winning. That's stupid. That's stupid. They're, 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 this book actually tells me a lot about how to be a husband. It has less to do with putting her in her place and more to do with putting me in my place. And so there's ways that we go about doing things. But who is it that you're trying to make happy, people or God? Sometimes those line up together, and it's amazing when it happens. Other times, you might have to pick and choose. So who matters more to you? I know that in my life, there's been times where I've said the right thing, but my actions actually didn't show it. I said, I care about what Jesus thinks about me. Yeah, then why are you doing that, saying that, and running over there with that? It, 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 does that make you? No, it don't. Okay, then. Well, all of us are being pulled in check, and ain't nobody going to live perfect. But, man, it's one thing to say I'm sorry to repent and to do something different and to change my ways rather than saying, oh, yeah, my bad. Those are two completely different things. You're going to get rewarded, but what reward are you going after and who do you want to reward you? That's going to dictate what happens with this thing that's called eternity. And then Paul said, yo, I'm going to go all out. I'm going to give it everything I have. I'm not going to hold anything back. Have you ever not tried because you were scared of failing? Paul said, I want this so bad. I don't care if I fall flat on my face. I'm going all out with it. And if it works, Good. And if it don't, oh well. That's what happened when I asked Pastor Liz out. She was so far out in front of me, I married way out of my league. I said, hey, baby girl. What's your name? Let me talk to you. Let me buy you some food. And then I'm CT. You know me. Free Life Chapel got a seat by me.
hey, hey, bars, all right? You're... That's exactly what happened with Pastor Lance. Was, she was so out of my league, and I said, you know what? I'm going to go for it because you know why? This is every guy's favorite motto. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So then why aren't you taking those shots with Jesus? I'm going harder for people than I am Jesus. I'm going harder for a sport than I am Jesus. I'm going harder for somebody who doesn't even know my last name more than I am for the one that died on the cross for my sins. Like, where, where's my priorities back at? Who are you going after? What are you going for? Go all out. Imagine what your life would look like if you went all out for Jesus. If you removed the excuses as to why not. If you removed all the fear that just jumps to your mind as to telling you that's blocking you, keeping you in your comfort zone. If you remove the insecurities, what would your life look like? How would your mental health be? How would your emotional health be? How would your relationships at home be? Relationships that you're with your friends? I don't know. John chapter six is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. John chapter 6 talks about Jesus and his disciples. Jesus was going around. His disciples was crueling with him. And um, they was going out and Jesus was doing some miracles. It was cool. A lot of people started to show up, right? It was like the first set of TikTok followers, except for you had to walk instead of just watch. And so they was going through. They, they were following Jesus everywhere he went. They went over to this area. They went by the Sea of Galilee. It's about four times bigger than Lake Hollingsworth. Okay, so they, so they was over by there, and um, all these people had been following Jesus, watching him do what he was doing, blah, 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 and then they said, yo, we got to feed these people. Like, you know, the you not you when you hungry? I think he started hearing, like, their stomach's gone, like, that's what I need to heal. Like, forget a broken bone. Like, y'all stomachs is loud. Like, he started freaking out, like, yo, we got to feed these people. What can we do? And so he started talking to his guy, Phil. He, he, he said, hey, Phil. We got about 5,000 men here. That's not including the women and children. How many people you ate at with the 4th of July? Imagine 5,000 men and women and children. That's a lot. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of sweat on that grill. So Jesus said, yo, we, we, I, I, know I need us to feed all these people. Um, Phil, how much money you think it's going to take for us to go down to Publix or to Sam's or to Walmart and, you know, to, to get everybody some food? And Phil was like, yo, with the money we got, even if we got a discount, we couldn't even get it. Like, not even a five-figure discount. Like, we, we can't feed all these people with the money that we have. So then there was this cat, his name is Andrew. Andrew came over and he said, hey, there's this little boy over here who's got five french fries and two fish sandwiches from McDonald's and they started laughing and they was making a joke at that boy but the boy ended up going over and he said hey but Jesus like I know this ain't everything I know this can't feed everybody but maybe this could do something and so it's all I have but you can have all that I have everybody else thought it was a joke laughing at him you ever been laughed at how'd that feel laughing at him. I'm sure the boy was feeling like humiliated, like, did I mess up? I was just trying to help. Like, I thought I was doing the right thing. The Bible said he, he was a boy. He would have been anywhere between potentially 6th grade through 12th grade. So one of you gave Jesus his food, and Jesus said, hey, I need you to tell everybody, go on and sit down, we finna eat. Imagine being a disciple. We're going to feed over 5,000 people with five large french fries from McDonald's and two fish fillets. That don't feed 5,000. That barely feeds me. That don't feed 5,000 people. Like, what's going on? The Bible says that with what that little boy gave, the five loaves and the two fish, they fed everybody and then went and collected all of the leftovers. There was more than enough. See, here's the reality. The boy had limitations. All he had was five loaves and two fish. But Jesus gave out an invitation. The boys had a physical limitation, but Jesus gave him an invitation to do something that he never would have been able to do on his own. Everybody yell out, no limits. There is no limit to what Jesus can do in your life if you give him a chance. 
Try it. Trust it. Lean in on it. Why not? I doubt that this boy thought that he was going to be able to feed 5,000 people. But it was because of the heart of, okay, it's not really what he gave, it's who he gave it to. You can give a lot of people your trust and they might break it. You can give a lot of people your heart and they might abuse it. You can give a lot of people an openness into your life and they might corrupt it. But you give it to Jesus and he perfects it. Boy, it wasn't what he had. It's, it's who he gave it to. There was no limitation. What he gave wasn't enough. Who he gave it to wasn't enough. So you might be feeling like, man, I don't have enough to give. I just started this Jesus thing, yo. Man, maybe some of you, I'm still shopping this thing. I don't really know how I feel. But the guy holding the mic, he's six foot seven, but he really loud. You're laughing at the loud part, right? Peace. I'm saying, I, I, I don't know about this. I mean, my grandmama's talked about him before. I was told that I'm supposed to pray before I eat. Uh, when someone sneezes, I'm supposed to say, bless you. So I, I, I get, God bless you if I'm really spiritual. You know what I'm saying? When, and when something happens to somebody or somebody loses somebody, I might even write on there, man, I'm praying for you. I, I don't really pray. It's just I, I thought it was a common courtesy to say. What if we actually leaned into Jesus the way that we think, the way that we might want? What, what if you tried going all out, no limits for Jesus? What if he took the limits off of the things that's keeping you down? And I don't know what that is. All of us have different limitations in our life, but here's what I do know. The Bible says this in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. It says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. We're going to read that again. I need everybody to say this with your outside voice. Ready? One, two, three. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in what, how you, in the way that you live, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. Just stole our excuse for I'm too young. I can do it when I get older. I can do it once I get married. I don't have to. I'm about to go to college. I want to have fun in college. So I don't need to do it right now, right? It's my senior year and I'm already turned for prom. So I don't want to do it right now. Let me wait till I'm done. But oh, he just looks so good. Let me do it after this situation ship. I'm about to get myself caught in. Took away all the excuse. He said, you might be limiting yourself because of your age, but I have never once limited you. Pastor Scott says this all the time. It's one of my favorite lines. He said, God is not a respecter of people. God's a respecter of effort. He respects people who put in effort. You pursue him, he pursues you right back. Otherwise, we're just sitting here. We're treating God like a genie in the bottle. Might as well call yourself Aladdin and only get three wishes. That ain't who Jesus is. If you limit him to that, then you have limited your life. However big you see God is how big your life can get. If you don't think, there's this phrase I used to hear growing up my whole life. Whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right. Do you believe that there's no limitations with God? I'm not saying you're going to jump off a building and fly. There's this thing called gravity. But if you try it, let me know so I can videotape it. Here's what I am saying. There's some things. Maybe it's this relationship with Jesus that some of us haven't gone all in because I'm too scared of what ifs. What if you flip the question? Instead of what if being something that keeps you back, what if it works? What if he actually is who he says that he is? What if he can actually do everything that we sing about him? What if he can actually do the things that you might have heard some of your family members say? What if he can heal your mind? He can heal your heart. He can restore families. He can restore relationships between you and parents. He can restore relationships between you and lost family members. What if? Everybody stand to your feet. Quincy Wilson 
that 16 year old track athlete, see, he didn't believe that there was a limitation to what he could do on a track field or on track uh, or on a track. If he did, he would have stayed in high school and been chilling, enjoying summertime. Instead, while maybe some of his other friends that is on the track team, while they're sitting at home playing video games, he's working harder than he ever has because he's wanting to achieve something that nobody else ever had. At 16 years old, he ripped an excuse off of what you can and cannot do because of your age. What makes you think that there's a limitation to what God can do in your life? I'm not asking you to bet on you and how good you are. Ain't no limitations as long as I work hard. Your hard work isn't good enough. The Bible said, I was talking with somebody earlier, and they said, hey, if we're, if we're really good people and we do a lot of good deeds and, and I give to the poor and, and I'm nice to people and I'm nice at home, is that enough to get to heaven? Based off of this book, no. Because all of us, the Bible says, all of us have fallen short of God's standards. Which is why there's this thing of grace and mercy. That I don't deserve it. My limitation is my sin. My limitation is my mess up. But God says, hey, I don't want to hold you down to your limitation. Link on to me. And then Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says this with whose power working in us God can do much much more than anything we can ask or think of God isn't somebody who limits you God is somebody who propels you but he's a gentleman he's not going to force his way in you have to allow him you have to put in the effort and then watch him put that effort right back into you everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed we give you the opportunity if you've never accepted Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've been in that shopping area or maybe, maybe you've gone away from it for a while and you said, maybe I prayed that prayer before, but I don't know if it's meant as much to me right now as what it has been back, th- what it did back then. And you know, I, I want to realign this thing. I don't want there to be any kind of a limitation, anything that I can control. I want to push that towards Jesus and let him do what he's going to do. I'm going to let him cook in my life. And if that's you and you want to give your heart to Jesus, on a count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Love that. Everybody put your hand down. Can we all repeat this prayer after me? Jesus. I love you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I believe you're the son of God, that you paid the price that I could not pay. I believe you rose from the grave and you helped me live a life that I can never live on my own. Help me to trust you and to go all in. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father God, I pray over every single person that is in this room, those that that gave their life to you, whether this was the first time or this was a rededication, the Bible says that heaven is going crazy and having a party for each and every person that did that. But God, for the rest of us, maybe we've been in a relationship with you, but there has been something that holds us back from taking that next step. And just like in a friendship, I want that thing to grow. Just like in a dating relationship, I want it to get better and better. In a marriage, I want it to get better and better. God, with my relationship with you. I don't want a stale relationship with you. I want it to grow and get better and better every single day. So God, show me what is blocking me, what is stopping me from going all in and give me the boldness and the courage in order to make those changes. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated.